Hey guys, Paul from Ned Audio here, and we're going to make this kind of a part two talking about the Pack Amp Pro, and we're going to talk about a specific application here, and the topic is going to be Epicenter. As I said in the last video, we do make harnesses that plug in on the factory subwoofer, but what are the instances where tapping in on that subwoofer signal is not what you want? For, for most music people listening to country rock, rap, you know, American pop, then tapping in on the factory subwoofer signal for most people works really, really great. The situations where it doesn't, and it can be kind of disappointing, is like in this case, he listens to a lot of traditional Mexican music, but also we did one not too long ago. If you follow our channel, you saw our Star Wars box. He listened to more metal. And for listening to metal and Hispanic music, it's more about what range is the bass music playing in. And if you want that upper bass to be like really, you know, death driving, beating your chest bass, then sometimes tapping in on the factory subwoofer is not going to be enough. The factory subwoofer plays 70, 80 hertz and down. So it's playing deeper bass, kick, uh, kick drum bass, lower bass guitar range. If you listen to um, like I said, Hispanic music, they're using, you know, acoustic bass guitars, they're using tubas and stuff that are more traditional instruments and they don't play down into that synthesized bass region. That frequency range, you're going up to 200, 250 hertz and down. If you're only feeding it 80 hertz and down, the epicenter can't work. Let's talk about that real quick. So the epicenter, this technology has been around since the 70s. And it's the reason it even came around, believe it or not, is because of disco. Who knew disco actually contributed to anything in society? With the disco era, you were dealing with uh, vinyl records still. With vinyl LPs, um, back in that era, again, you still didn't have a lot of deep bass. You were going off of acoustic instruments, acoustic bass guitars, you had uh, electric bass guitars, but at that time, well, honestly, even same today, the music industry is here to make money. Believe it or not, they're not after music purity. They're here to make money. So a record is made off of scratches and ticks. So I'm like trying to keep it really simple. The lower the frequency you go, the bigger the tick is. The bigger the tick is, the more space it takes up on a record, meaning the less tracks, the less, fewer songs you can get on each side of a record. Well, they don't like that. Instead of six songs on a, on a vinyl, they want to have eight or ten. What they do is they put, the technical term is it's a high pass filter. It's blocking the bass off of the, the vinyl from 70 hertz and down. A lot of your old school vinyl, uh, you know, vinyl recordings don't play lower than 70 hertz. And I'm talking old. I'm talking 50s, 60s range. Enter disco. Well, with disco, you came the synthesizer. So now the synthesizer is making deep bass. You're getting dance music. You're getting boom, boom. You know, you're getting deep bass coming off of your, your songs. Then they record them on vinyl and it has no bass because they want more songs per side of the album. What they came out with is the Epicenter. Audio Control's been around this long. This is their technology. What the Epicenter does is it creates bass where there is no bass. It makes bass. The Epicenter takes your upper harmonics up to, you know, where you're, it's adjustable, but it's taking the upper bass music, so in the 150, 200, 250 range, and it creates subharmonics off of that to make deep bass where there is no deep bass. So that way you could go to the club, hear your song, you're like, ooh, ooh, this is freaking awesome and I'm a disco in and all that stuff. Then you get home and you try to listen to it and there's no bass. So they made the epicenter to process that and make more deep bass. Well now fast forward, this item has been around and sold and made since the 70s. With Hispanic music, it's all that upper bass. This makes deep bass where there is no deep bass. So it's taking your, your tubas and your bass guitar and your upright bass and it creates that rumble and that deep bass off of it. Now, it has settings, it has adjustments. There is too much too much of it, especially on American pop music, it gets tends to get really growly. So there is still kind of a science to getting stuff dialed in and how to work with it. Now go to our other customer who was more of a metalhead with what he was listening to um, with, with like 80s and 90s metal, 
same thing. You're, you're dealing with a lot of like kick drum, just your double pedal and your bass off of that, which is not deep music. And they typically don't have a lot of real heavy bass guitar. So it's a metal, man. It's all about the vocals and the guitars and the drums and the hi-hats and everything going on with that. We put in his system, got it all tuned up, got everything playing. It sounded awesome on, you know, American rock and pop and rap and all that stuff. It was beaten, put it on EDM and it's shaking, fluttering the whole freaking truck. But then I went to, you know, classic metal on uh, on Pandora. It came up with a Judas Priest song. Man, the sub disappeared completely. It was no bass. We took the epicenter knob and we added just like, like not even a quarter. And holy crap, Judas Priest was beating the crap out of the truck. He was grinning ear to ear. It was exactly what he was wanting. There are some stereo people who say the epicenter is terrible. It just adds distortion. All it's gonna do is you know destroy your subs. And that's really, really bad mentality. It is an excellent tool. We even have one on our main sound room so we can show you this is what this does. In both of these applications, you know, listening to you know ethnic music that doesn't have bass, listening to you know rock or metal, listening to you know Man, some classic country, you throw some George Strait and put a little bit of bass on it, it surprises the heck out of you. Now, if you go full tilt, it just gets real muddy and growly and grumbly. So there definitely, definitely is a limitation on how much you can put. Now, since we're doing this video, we'll talk about the Epicenter Micro and what it's doing. So what the Micro is doing is it's a much smaller, much more compact unit nowadays. All the jumpers and switches and settings and stuff are gone from the inside. They're on the outside now. Much, much easier for us to make adjustments. We also have preset load selecting built in. So if you're running high level from the factory subwoofer signal from your factory radio, then this will give us the load to keep the factory amplifier happy. This gives us all the different stuff we need. We have the widen of the sweep. This is a whole choice of conversations to talk about that and how to dial that in but the main upgrade that makes me happy is their new knob this is a two-part knob the previous ones were big and you had two knobs next to each other so you would have to have your your epicenter knob and then you'd have to have your subwoofer knob so it just took up a lot of space now this is your master volume for your subwoofer this is turning your subwoofer output coming out of the, the epicenter down and up. So instead of you having to have a knob coming from your aftermarket amp, you have this one. And then now this is your epicenter effect. So this is how much of that epicenter effect it's giving to the new amplifier. Everything's all in one nice little tidy package. It can come apart and you can flush mount it on the dash. This is like absolutely worth having the newer, you know, smaller unit. Hopefully that answers some questions. This is not a bad tool. If your customers ask about saying they want a base processor or an epicenter, it's not a bad tool. It just takes some education on how to set it up, how to dial it in and tune it, because it is definitely, definitely a valuable piece and a valuable tool to have in your arsenal of things. Now the question is, why should I use the Amp Pro AP Sub with the epicenter. Again, it comes down to frequency range. If you're listening to that more traditional music and it plays upper bass, but you're not feeding it that upper bass, then your epicenter is not going to work right because the epicenter takes the upper bass to make low bass. If you're tapped in on factory sub and it's only playing 50 to 80 hertz down, it doesn't matter how much you crank up this effect, it's not going to make the bass for you from the upper bass frequencies. If you're trying to play bass guitar and tuba and it, you're wanting that to be coming out and really screaming at you, you're not getting the correct signal. That's when you're gonna need to use the a AP sub in order to play up higher. This plays up to 250 hertz, so 250 down, now you're going to catch all that stuff that you're wanting to catch in order to feed to the epicenter. So that's going to get you to the bass guitar and your tuba and your upright bass and everything that you're wanting to make bass from. Because if you don't feed it the upper frequencies, it will not play the lower frequencies out of the epicenter. If you have any more questions or anything about setup or application, hit us up in the comments. I always answer the comments and I'll be glad to help you out. Feel free to give us a shout, call the shop, and anyone up here will be able to help you out. 940 Six, seven, 1800 hit us up on Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff and then you can always you know hit me on email at paul at netaudio.com and I'll be glad to point you in the right direction thanks guys